Greetings, friends, and welcome to our daily reading and prayer reflection for the second day of Lent. I'm reading from uh, Contemplating the Cross, a Pilgrimage of Prayer by Tricia McCary Rhodes. We begin with a quotation. In the cross, God is revealed not as one reigning in calm disdain above all the squalors of the earth, but as one who suffers more keenly than the keenest sufferer, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Oswald Chambers. We begin by reading this passage in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 to 38. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Mark 14, verse 34. Trisha McCary Rhodes writes, The hour is late. Stillness settles like an eerie cloud over Jerusalem. As he enters the gate in the wall around Gethsemane, Jesus motions to Peter, James, and John to come with him. The others sit down quietly to wait for they do not know, for what they do not know. And the three follow into the recesses of the garden. Jesus moves slowly, perhaps stopping to lean against a gnarled tree trunk. White knuckles protrude from tightened fists and his head hangs in weariness. Peter, James, and John glance at each other, wondering what to do. Your teacher has never been like this before. They saw him cry when his friend Lazarus died, and only a week ago, as he entered Jerusalem, he sobbed out loud over the neediness there. Yet that was a strong cry, laced with sadness, perhaps, but not despair. This is different. Overwhelming sorrow consumes the Christ. Through clenched lips, he utters, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. A beleaguered bellow from the depths of his being. What must it be like to grieve to the point of death? The language here speaks of both physical pain and mental anguish. Jesus knows not only agony of soul, but feels life itself slipping away as distress distills in his veins. Perhaps he could die even now, simply close his eyes, let his heart break and be swept into eternity's glorious gates. Instead, he laments aloud the condition of his soul. My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Does he hope to be comforted? Wish things could be different? Is all this a surprise to the omniscient one? Didn't he know before he came that his heart would tear in two? Does the omnipotent Son of God have no power over the pain that threatens to undo him? As sporadic sounds waft through the air from the valley below, a deathly quiet pervades the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus grieves. Perhaps John reaches out but hesitates at the look of torment in his teacher's eyes. Peter looks around, ready to do something, anything to end this distress. Jesus' body begins to shake. The man James once thought would be king is now pale, gaunt, and powerless. Man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Strange words to describe a deity, but he has given it all up. Didn't consider equality with God something to cling to. Now, what must the Messiah think? Does he long for a taste of the days when angels sang and all of creation cried out to his exalted presence? Would he shed his royal robes so readily in light of this smothering sadness? Is the love that once sent him spinning into a woman's womb faltering even a little? A resounding no echoes through the halls of eternity. The wretchedness written on the face of Christ will play itself out to the bitter end. 
Anything less would leave God's children hanging in the balance, bound in the slave market of sin's great camp. This he cannot allow. In some strange way, God the Father is pleased to crush his only son. And so as travelers below settle down for another night's sleep, God's eternal plan marches forward. Earth's countless inhabitants are oblivious to the waves of emotion crashing into the cosmic Christ, threatening to drown him with their force. My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. He mourns, but life goes on. Let us pray. Man of sorrows, you have looked sorrow in the face and wept in its wasteland, and though you grieved to the point of death, you did not die, not then. O oh God, in the soil of your sadness, seeds of hope are planted for a dying world. Let us search deeply this moment of yours. Open wide our eyes that we might glimpse your eternal sacrifice. Take us into your dark night and we will acquaint ourselves together with the paradox of grief's glory. Change us into the followers you desire us to be. In your powerful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, please take time to contemplate this scene as we move towards Easter. And until we are together again, I bid you shalom.